Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me this wonderful day that the Lord has made. The Bible says in Psalm 71 verse 7, it says, My life is an example to many because you have been my strength and my protection. Father, we honor and thank you so much for your word. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, increase your protection and your strength over your people that the world may know that you love your people, O God. Father, use them as an example to the rest of the world. Lord, that he pays to be your child and that he pays to serve you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. The most valuable thing that a child of God has is the voice of God. If you can hear the voice of God, then you have something that is extremely valuable. And that is because the voice of God will lead you. The voice of God will guide you. It will direct you. It will tell you what to do. It will tell you where to go. It will tell you what job to take. It will tell you where to invest. It will basically be the one, you know, guiding and directing every single thing that you do. If you do not hear or know how to hear the voice of God, what that means is that you are going to be making very wrong decisions in life. And you know that where you are today is a combination of all the decisions you have made. Life, the totality of life is all about decisions. You are where you are today because of the decisions you took. So if you take a lot of right decisions you will notice that your life will move in, you know, getting better and getting better. But if you constantly make bad decisions, if you are, you know, you make mistakes in judgment, your life is going to be, you know, heading in a downward turn. And if you allow yourself to make decisions by mental calculation or by what you can see with your eyes, what you can hear, you are going to be in trouble because life that you can see with your eye is actually just a cover. There are so many things that go on behind the scene that you might not be able to see, you know, from the outside. That is why you need to depend on God to guide you. You need to depend on God to lead you. You need to depend on the eyes that see beyond the physical, the eyes that see the end from the beginning. You need to depend on that eyes and that is the eyes of God. Now, God was teaching something to a prophet in the Old Testament. His name was Samuel. So a time came when God told prophet Samuel that I want you to go to the house of Jesse and anoint the next king of Israel. So the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 verse 6, when they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. So Samuel was going to anoint Eliab. He was the first son of Jesse because he, you know, he looked at him on the outside and made a decision. But the Bible says in verse 17, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So in the physical side, the man looks like the perfect candidate. So for instance, if you're going to make a choice in terms of marriage, you would definitely choose this person because on the outside, he looks great. He looks amazing. looks awesome. He ticks all the boxes in the physical. But if you go to God to ask questions, God will say, no, I, God, have rejected this person. Now remember that though God has rejected Eliab, Eliab was still fighting in the Lord's army because he was one of the Israeli soldiers. You know, he was the first son. He was still handsome, most likely had some sort of income coming to him because of course he was a soldier, he was paid. And at that time, the allied people were the people in the king's employ. So if you read the whole story, you find out that Eliab was in the king's employ. So he was like, you know, maybe like a secret service person or somebody that works in the FBI or, you know, something really pretty high up there and all that because he was among the people fighting the king's army. But in spite of all of these great and amazing things on the outside, God said, I have rejected him because I don't see the way that men see. So God expects to guide you and direct you and to lead you. If you do not know how to be led by the Spirit of God, you're going to have a lot of problems in life. So you need to pay attention to the leading of the Spirit of God. The first way that God leads people is through his word. Now, but there are certain situations that may not really be in the word. So how do you deal with it? So let's give an example. So for instance, God says to you, um, you know, don't marry somebody that is not saved. He said, do not be unequally with unbelievers, meaning 
meaning that you should marry people who are Christians. Okay, that's fine. You take that command from the word of God. However, there are so many Christians that, you know, are out there that want to marry you or you want to marry them. Now, the Bible didn't put anybody's name in particular. So how are you meant to make a choice when those specific details are not in the Bible? God expects that you are led by something called the inward witness. It is the second way that God speaks. So the Bible is the first way. The second way that God speaks to his people is called the inward witness or the inward guide or the inward direction. Now, this is not like a voice speaking to you anything. But on your inside, you have a leading. You see people use words like, I have a leading or I feel led or I feel good in my spirit about this or I feel bad in my spirit about that. Another way you could say, I have a check. So for instance, you want to go ahead and take a decision. You want to take a job. You want to do something and inside of you, something just doesn't feel right. That is the way that God usually speaks to his people. He gives them a kind of restriction. You know, on the inside, you just feel all is not well. Everything looks good on the outside, but something just won't feel right. Or on the flip side, on the outside, this job doesn't look so good. This thing doesn't look so good on the outside. But whenever I think about it on the inside, my heart is so joyful. It's not making sense to my head. But I have this peace, this go-ahead signal on my inside, this velvety good feeling deep in my spirit. I'm not talking about your emotions or anything like that. I'm talking about deep in your spirit, man. Whenever you think about making that step or taking that action, you have like a go-ahead signal in your spirit. Your spirit is open. It is light. You're excited about it, though it doesn't make sense to your head. It is called the inward witness. It is called the inward guide. That is the way that God speaks to men. He puts that knowledge in your spirit, man. Is a perception you feel in your spirit that I have a feeling or just feel that move to go ahead and do this or to go ahead and do that. Now, that is why you need to be more conscious of the spirit that is on your inside. Look on the inside all the time. Don't take decisions based on what is going on on the outside. Take decisions based on what is going on on the inside. Now, for those decisions to be right, what it means that you need to develop your spirit, man. If you're not somebody who prays and studies and you're just generally not conscious of developing your, your, you know, spirit man, then even when God puts a notch in your spirit, you will still not be able to hear. You will still not be able to pick the signals of God. So again, the first way that God talks to his people is through the word. But then in more specific terms, he talks through what is called the inward witness, you know, a, a sign on your inside telling you, go ahead and do this. Anytime you want to take a decision, anytime you want to do something and you have a restriction, don't go ahead. Calm down, first of all. But if you're not the kind of person that pays attention to what is going on on the inside, you will miss the leading of God. You will miss the inward witness. You will miss the inward direction. You will miss those things that God is saying, do this, don't do this. You want to do something and you feel a restriction. But if you're the person that is noisy, you're not developing your spirit, man, you don't pray, you don't study, you don't meditate on the word of God, you're not developing your spirit, man, the chances of you missing the direction and guidance of God through the inward witness is very, very high. Now, see what the Bible says in Romans 8, 14. He said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Meaning what? God's Spirit leads his people. God's Spirit guides his people. He tells them what to do and what not to do. He puts a restriction on their inside or a go-ahead signal on their inside. That is how God speaks. It's a perception on inside on the inner man your inner man picks up signals from the spirit of god that is the way that god leads his people as we look at our devotional tomorrow i'm going to show you another way also that god leads his people thank you so much for listening god bless you You for other life-changing messages you can now download the app rev oyik speaks from play store for android phone users or apple store for ios users you can also follow us on instagram YouTube and Telegram, all on the handle Oyeks Alfred. Priority, Jesus. Nothing else comes close. You are my greatest necessity, and nothing matters more. Can you try and say? You are my highest
You 